to read. Um, we had a one of our former police officers, uh, Mr. Um, Sergeant James Folsom, passed away recently, and um, we have to take a challenge for him to her in honor and memory of him. Um, at this time, I'd like to ask Commissioner Neary to read a brief statement in memory of Sergeant James Colson on behalf of the, of the Township and the Board of Commissioners. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> the Upper Chichester Township Board of Commissioners mourn the loss and recognize the contributions to our community of Sergeant James G. Colson, Jr., Sergeant Colson, a resident of the Twin Oaks Farm neighborhood of Upper Chichester, served as a member of the Upper Chichester Township Police Department for 45 years. Hired as a patrolman in 1973, he rose to the rank of sergeant and later assisted the department in the position of turnkey. James Jim Colson was a great man who had a positive effect on his community and the people he knew. Our thoughts and prayers are with the Colson family. May Jim rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, at this moment, I'd like to take roll call, please. Sure thing. Commissioner Baco? Here. Commissioner Whitaker? Here. Commissioner Godioso? Here. Commissioner Rakowski? Here. Commissioner Neary? Here. Michael Pierce? Here. Lisa Catania? Here. And myself, George Needles, present. Thank you. Uh, please note that the board met last week in executive session on July 1st. And we met tonight on July 8th in executive session also to discuss personnel matters. Um, at this time, I'll take citizen comments via the phone. Um, I, after we're done taking comments through the phone, uh, I will open it up to public comments inside the room. Um, so with that said, if you'd like to dial in, the phone number is 571-748-4021. Again, the phone number is 571 748 4021. The code to enter is 259-545-320 pound. Again, the code to enter is 259-545-320 pound. To mute your phone, please dial star six. After muting your phone, state your name, your address, then begin your comment. You'll be given two minutes to speak and you'll be placed back on mute after your comment. I'll give this a minute. If we don't have any comments via the telephone, I will open it up to the individuals in the room. Hello. Hello, how are you tonight? Can you please state your name and address for the record? Hi, yes, my name is Robert Brookman. I'm an attorney uh, for Vincent Smith who is in the room tonight. Yes. Um, yes, um, uh, you might recall I uh, attended via telephone last week as well. Uh, we wanted to follow up pertaining to the road issue. Um, Mr. Smith uh, tells me that he has communicated with Ward 4 Commissioner uh, Nicole Whittaker. Um, and the substance of those conversations essentially were that they were going to be attempting to complete the road uh, by with public grant money by the end of the summer. Um, and I believe Ms. Whittaker said that, that the Grading would need to be completed first on on, the, on Mr. Uh, Smith's property by way of background. The grading has been a problem because of contractors uh, retained by Mr. Smith who did a poor job to say the least, uh, which resulted in litigation. Um, Ms. Whitaker did indicate that the township would like to hold on to the $15,000 that was held in escrow that Mr. Smith had turned over until the grading is done. Um, our view is, of course, we're fine with, uh, we fine with and encourage that the, the road to be done with public money, um, but we do not see any reason why uh, the $15,000, which was turned over for the explicit purpose of, it's necessary for this road, right? Uh, but if the money's, if the, if the road's being completed with township money, we don't see any reason that the township should retain the, these funds pending um, pending completion of the grading work. 
Um, and with that, I'll turn it over. But uh, but that would be our request that the road be done with public money and that the fifteen thousand dollars be returned uh, as soon as possible to Mr. Smith. All right. Well, we thank you for your comment. I know that I I, I stopped out at the residence. I, I spoke with the owner's brother. I know, believe Ms. Commissioner Whitaker spoke with the owners also. Um, I believe she will be addressing that during her, um, during her report. Okay. So um, right now we don't, um, I'm not gonna cover any detailed questions at, at this moment of time, but we will cover it during Ms. Whitaker's report. Thank you. I'll give it another couple another couple seconds to see if anybody else is going to call in through the phone, and then I'll open it up to public comment. All right, let the record show there are no public comments through the phone. I will open up the comment uh, to individuals in the room. Um, before we get started, I see there's a large crowd of um, Chester Thunder here, and I'm assuming this is about a dog park. So I just before we get started, I just want everybody to understand that officially there is no park, dog park going in yet. It has not been voted on. There was a master parks plan created um, that was recommended by the rec board of Upper Chichester Township. It's a committee of five people. Um, so we did um, a rec plan for CBL fields. We did one up, up up here on the municipal building. So everything is in discussion still. Nothing is final. So I just want to put everybody's mind at ease about that. And with that said, I will open up the citizens' comments. We have a large room tonight. I'm going to be strict and limited it to two minutes. So with that said, um, how about a representative from uh, Thunder come up and speak? Um, if you come right up here, um, Andrew will have the microphone. Just for your, just for, for the record, can you please state your name and address? Yep, um, my name is Rayella Penta, and uh, we live at 1923 Meeting House Road. Um, and I'm actually here uh, with Thunder, obviously, but for the field maintenance part of it. And then um, Sharon is, is here for the dog park part of it. Okay. And we have a, a lot of our team here, obviously, to help represent um, so, I have three children, ages 10, 8, and 6. I'm a softball coach as well as on the board, and we have volunteer at Boothwood Elementary. I want to start out by thanking you guys for giving us the fields that are there and the snack stand and whatnot. Um, and my purpose here is to ask for your help in repairing and regularly maintaining the fields at Fury Road. As many of us who play there every day would agree, the fields are in atrocious shape. I think you need to be aware of the safety issues that are associated with high use sports fields and there are and there are sports management strategies to ensure the safety of the fields for everyone. Overuse of the fields on very wet or very dry conditions can injure the turf turf density which is necessary for the athletes to perform. I don't know if you're familiar with the fields and I can explain the huge dips that there are in the outfield, the huge lip there is from the outfield grass being dug out because it wasn't maintained over the winter so it grew so they just had to dig out even lower and that berm on the edge can make ball bounce and hit someone in the throat or the chest the face um but i also have i do have pictures of sort of the field if that helps you guys to see what they look like if you have any pictures can you please submit submit them to our township manager mr george needles we're approaching the two minutes Okay. Well, um, I would then real quick we've got to. I would like the Public Works to have it on their schedule for like a weekly maintenance. They have the grooming machine. It would be like an hour. And right now, all the coaches, some coaches, are putting in an additional thirty plus hours per season to do the grooming because we're doing it manually. I have coaches that have been here with shovels scooping it out, and you guys have the equipment. It would take less than an hour, and it would prevent a lot of things. We've had to cancel games, and other fields were fine. BYC went over there. We were just we put out in the shuffle. They have game after game after game, and as you see in the pictures, our fields were still underwater. It's just a major, major issue with the drainage, and the grant, the round two grant um, from 
open spaces would also be applicable for something to think about, about addressing the drainage, the bigger drainage issue at our fields. Well, yeah, Al, thank you for coming tonight. I mean, we'll, we will take your um, concerns under consideration. Um, I know our, our, know our hiring department is very busy at times. Um, contractually, they're not obligated to take care of the infields. What I mean by that is, is the Domitech. Usually, the parents that are involved with CBL or, 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 or girls softball, they're, they're the ones that usually maintain the, 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 uh, the, the fields by uh, dragging them. Right. The problem um, here, though, is the drainage issue that was caused by the project a few years ago. So this is not like a regular, we can't just drag it and it's okay. It right. needs well, more than that. Uh, all, all I can tell you is that we can, uh, I'll discuss it with the board and see a, if there's a viable path forward. So if they're not under contract for it, then who would, who, is there someone else that would be able to do that from the township? Well, you want me to speak? Sure, go ahead. The, the, high, the highway department doesn't always have time to go down there. Mm -hmm. They cut the grass. When we can get them down there, we get them down there. But last year, to try to help the drainage problems, I could be on the dollar figure, George, help me. I think we spent about 15 or 20 grand to try to address it. We had a, a professional company come in that does baseball fields. I That's heard. I do. don't think they did it. Did it. But uh, the efforts there is what I'm getting at. Right. We, we hear you, and we're trying. But um, mm -hmm. I think we're going to – we have on, under contract, George, to come every year now, I think. Yeah. Now, but, but, some of the use from the, the men's softball, we recoup some revenue from that. They pay for them fields, and we get – thousands of dollars you know so you got to take the good with the bad it helps you know maintain them it helps us cover some of the costs what the men coming to the fields they pay for it okay right but but we use them with like the township girls like i have some of my girls here that's who yes. we use it and we don't want them to get hurt so we are wind up, a lot of the parents are out there doing a lot more work than is a typical dragging of the fields so if, if the highway department doesn't have the availability to do that, I'm saying, is there is there someone else from the township that can be responsible for that? I know the township has a groomer machine that would also make it a lot easier. You mean cutting the grass or? No, the or, groomer, or, or like inside of the fields. Dragging the infields. Yeah, mm -hmm. they have a special hookup. Uh, Lou, 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 Mr. Mr. Purdy, Mr. it's going to be one at a time, please. We're here to support you, but I can't have people just arbitrarily blurt out because then the, the, the meeting's just going to get chaos, okay? So we're going to do our best to try to help you. Just please, one at a time. Thank you. Hey, Al, I heard your concerns. Just give us a chance to think of something. Okay. okay. Thank you. So then, will you get back to the Chichester girls softball? We can have or our rec. We'll have we can, another we meeting. We can have our rec. Rec director work with you alongside that. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry, go, 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 go ahead. Hi, I'm Sharon Anastasia, address 4102, Virginia Court. Um, so follow up on what Rael said and uh, the gentleman in the green, you know, yeah, that's the way it was run for years. You know, we had the same president now for, what, 15 years. And but that's before all those fields were dug up and that became a two year battle. I, I can't even get into that because I have something else to, to um, address. So, so it is the, um, the Doll park. We were told that the shed was being taken out as an eyesore. That was a lie. There was actually plans to get a dog park in. Our contents were thrown on field three without a text message. Just thrown. No text message. If Rael didn't go up there, I wouldn't have known it was even sitting there. Um, and the chain of command. Like, why is there work being done on field four if you guys didn't even take a vote yet? 
You know, Brian claims that he didn't know. Oh, I didn't know that we're being worked on on fuel four. How did you not know? It's up there. They already saw the basis out. They're doing work. If you guys didn't take a vote on it, how is the work being completed? Start it. Um, that's like one question we have. And, you know, if the fields are our, our responsibility, then why aren't we informed? We're not against the dog park. We're, we're against it for any kind of youth organization to take it away. And um, I don't want to hear our numbers are down. Everybody's numbers are down. It's COVID. Soccer's down. CBL's down more than half since when I first moved up here. They used to have 400 kids. They have like 200 this year. So, you know, everybody's numbers are down. That should be like no consideration unless we had like zero, I guess. Um, that I think is discrimination against the girls. You know, you're never going to take from the boys. Like, can you close? imagine if you took this a CBL, soccer, or football? You'd have every man who's a coach there up in here, you know, really protesting. It's like, let's take from the girls. Let's take from, the, it's, it's not right. It's not right at all. I just, I would love a dog park somewhere around here. Uh, maybe um, next to the playground or, you know, a, a part of another park somewhere else in Chichester. It's, 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 it would be wonderful not to have to travel. But people don't like dog. I don't like the dog. Yeah, they're going to have to park down here, walk past the skate park, and kids coming out playing basketball. Walk past field three where there's grandparents, parents, kids walking by, and you can't control other people's dogs as they're walking up to field four. I don't, I don't know. I, I think we should fix the drainage problem up there and continue to play. It's where all my littles play. Um, in four years, we haven't had a t-ball team. I have 13 girls this year, 13, five and six year olds. Like the numbers are starting to build up again. And it's, it's wonderful to see, but to take away a field without guaranteeing us a field somewhere else in the township or something like that, I just don't think it's fair. Um, and I don't, I don't know what's going on here. I don't know how it, a vote didn't get didn't get set yet, and there's work being done already. So, so let me respond to a couple things that you said. Um, in speaking with our rec director, Brian, he, he stated to me that there have been discussions starting back in 2018 regarding the reduction of numbers in girls softball. And there was also discussions that field three is not used. It was used for pract um, prepping for games or practices. And Rael informed him that they could use field four prior to games, that field three was in horrible conditions and it was not going to be used. So um, when you stated that Brian wasn't aware, there were some things that were done by our highway supervisor in um, considering looking at the fields to see if it would be appropriate for a dog park. So there were some things done that Brian was not aware of. But again, the board, um, not sure that we we necessarily have to take a vote, but um, it has not been discussed fully with the board. Uh, it was discussed among the rec board and they're the ones that make decisions and they bring those decisions to the board for our consideration. So nothing has been done. Um, we have had requests, several requests from residents for, do for dog park and we don't want to just have our property or land unused. So if we can put it to good use, then we will. If girls softball needs it, then we will take that into consideration as well. But again, we were informed that it was not being used. So that's why we, so. So it's not about girls or it's, it's not about girls or boys first. Okay. So it's, it's not about girls or boys. It's about the, 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 Frank and um, our new person, uh, Rael, excuse me, stating that it wasn't being used. That's why it was looked at for a dog park. But George, you wanted to add a couple things. Yeah, uh, just, just so everybody's clear kind of how this all works and what's going on. So the township was awarded two grants, uh, one from DCNR and one from Delaware County Greenways to prepare a master parks and recreation plan. Uh, that planning is going to be starting in one month and it'll be about a one year process. That one-year process will involve a uh, task force that will be made up of individuals that represent the various youth athletic leagues, churches, uh, you know, uh, maybe corporations or, or neighborhood groups. And what they're going to do is they're going to evaluate our current park system. They're going to evaluate our current open space system. Uh, they're going to uh, evaluate potential for trails. 
and they're going to uh, evaluate potentially underutilized properties that may be able to come under ownership of the township. That'll be a very open public process with outreach, uh, like uh, big outreach programs where we do surveys, where we uh, ask people to come out to the, the municipal building and look at these potential plans. So what we do with the planners to get them started with this is we give them these like mini comp plans that our township planner does. So currently we've provided them with a uh, mini comp plan for Johnson Avenue Park, uh, Twin Oaks Park, uh, what do, 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 do? CBL ball fields, and here. Um, none of them are, are finalized plans other than the CBL plan, which was adopted by the board, which was to include a trail. Uh, it was to uh, put in some rain gardens, try to make a park there to be, make it a, a 12 month park as opposed to a three month baseball fields. Um, so again, like all this gets flushed out. And when these documents come out and these renderings come out, it's like kind of like, hey, this could be, it's not a, this will be. Uh, it was explained to me this morning when I spoke with the, uh, the, the uh, highway superintendent that the reason that the shed was taken down was because it was a township shed that was in disrepair uh, and he did not feel comfortable having people go in and out of it. So my understanding was that there was communication prior to that coming down that that was going to need to come down. So I mean, uh, you know, we do we do make improvements all the way through. Correct. So 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 I would absolutely so so so. Guys, he has. My understanding is that the shed was in poor condition. Communication to you that your that your stuff was missed okay so can we can, can we listen you I think the best thing to do is we need to sit down you need to sit down with our rec director and work work and work and work things through Yes, just work through Brian. Brian is in charge of a recreation here. Coordinate things. I just talked to Brian today. He and, and no, it's not definitely going in. So there's there's just a miscommunication. Nothing is finalized. Okay. Thank you. So we're going to move on to another individual that would like to come up and speak. Anybody from the opposite side of the room? Oh, yes. I was going to uh, reiterate what the lawyer said, but I'm not. My name is Martin Smith, property 2334 and 2340. I was going to reiterate what the lawyer said, but I prepared a statement. You guys just take care of it there. Mr. Smith, we're, we're I, I, I got you. Stop down to talk to you. Ms. Whitaker, stop talk to you. We, you know, right. right. So, so that's why that's why I'm just saying that. My other issue. We have something. My my other issue is uh. It's, it's not about that. It's about fireworks, right? I live I live in my uh, neighborhood in Twin Oaks, and uh, you know they were shooting fireworks in the residential area. I live around at uh, pipelines that go all around Upper Chichester. 
Um, I know you can't really fix it right now, the issue about the fireworks and whatnot, but uh, I, I spoke to the police chief and uh, we have an issue. Like, uh, we could blow up everybody in here. I think that you guys should uh, send somebody out there when there's a report or send it in the mail to everybody so they can understand the the problem that we have with fireworks in the neighborhood. Well, uh, Mr. Smith, as you know, last week, I talked about that at the, during the meeting, that people need to stop firing them off. And I'm sure everybody's aware, or most people should be aware, of the hockey player who took a mortar around in his chest during the fireworks display at, his, at a residence and died as a result. These things are very dangerous. We can get the police to enforce if it's called in, but the problem is that most people who are shooting them off at home, the neighbors don't complain, and then the police can't respond. And when they do respond, most of the time, it's they are, they're only shooting them off for 10 or 15 minutes. But I agree with you 100% that it needs to be curtailed. Yeah, they, they, somebody needs to come in and, well, send out a newsletter or something, put it in a newspaper, tell everybody, because it doesn't just affect my neighborhood, it affects everybody in here. So you have a chain reaction and blow up this whole upper chai chest. And, and you know, I, I heard your concerns about a field and all that, about a baseball field, but I have flood th issues in my neighborhood from streets not being completed. I got a leaning telephone pole, me and my wife seen on TV that, that it caught the place on fire. The two minutes are up, and we, we, we are, like I said, I stopped down. I, I, you know, we talked. I saw everything. Ms. Whitaker's going to work with you. Okay. All right. Thank it's, you. A, it's an emergency. It affects everybody. Thank you, um, sir. Just state your name and address for the record, please. Yes. Hello. Hello. My name is My Steve name Moyer. Moyer. I'm. Uh, I live at Three Thousand Village Way in uh, Blue Twin Section of Upper Chai. And I'm currently the vice president of the Creekside Condominium Association. I want to begin by thanking those of you who are involved over the past several years with the association in having us being successful getting the two carriage home buildings as part of our community. As most of you know, we were originally to be seven mid-rise buildings. The builder left and declared bankruptcy and left us with two empty lots. We finally, that was in 2009. We did finally get a buyer to develop the two empty lots and he wouldn't build the uh, mid-rise buildings with 27 units in each building, but he did build two buildings on the same size lot with six carriage homes in each of the two lots. So we have 12 carriage homes. Long story short, with that piece of it, we were able to complete the development of Creekside. As you are aware, the builder of the carriage homes is Al Costa. It is Creekside's understanding that the township does have an extra account from Mr. Costa, and with that, a punch list of items that needed to be either corrected or completed upon development. Today, all 12 units are occupied and have been for three years, in some cases more than three years. I will say through a lot of anguish and hard work, the township engineer, thank you, and the fourth ward commissioner, thank you, among others, I'm sure it's not just you two, have been successful in convincing Mr. Costa to complete, I'm gonna say approximately 80 to 90% of the punch list. We thank you for keeping on top of that and accomplishing what has been accomplished to date. About a week and a half ago, our association had an open town hall meeting. Because of COVID, we haven't been able to have them. So we had an open town hall meeting with all the residents and the carriage home residents had questions and concerns over their frustrations because of what they believe to be actions or inactions of Mr. Costa. Some issues pertain to it before he did the regrading and some pertain after he did the regrading just a couple of months ago. I want to say our board, we have five member board, all five members of the board are here tonight and we've had many residents from the carriage homes here tonight also. Again, I want to thank you. And I'd like you to hear from some of the residents. I think we only have two or three residents that would like to speak to you. And after that, we would like two things, a plan of action going forward 
and a timeline to complete the plan. Okay, Steve, if I could just, um, I did ask um, Mr. Pierce last week to give me a, a letter or a communication of some type. I'm old, I still refer to him as letter since, you know, um, some type of, some form of communication indicating what the prior, what the future course is for the homeowners, especially the, um, and the carriage houses where the um, windows have been damaged and the slider was damaged. Yes. Because I think, I'm not sure what the, process is whether you have to go after the landscaper who has to go after the HOA, the COA, and then you have recourse to cost as insurance, I believe. But I'm waiting for him to give me that. So, you know, as soon as I get that, I will get it, get it to you. And I, I thank you for thanking Lisa and I, because as you know, we have spent a lot of time with it. And I'm not back myself on the back, but we've had yeah. many, many emails. I went through emails last night. There's over 50 emails between you folks and myself in the past year, and I, I appreciate that. And I'm sure the folks that live there appreciate that too. Thank you, Mr. Moore. We'd like to hear from your um, neighbor. Please state your name and address for the record. Thanks. Uh, I'm Tom Warner, O-R-N-E-R, -E at 1006 Village Way. Um, I'm one of the carriage house owners um, that had the, uh, had the grading problem uh, behind there. So uh, I guess we were trying to figure out what, uh, what you know how do we move forward you know is there uh, uh we know there's some escrow account but it doesn't appear to be motivating the builder to repair or you know finish this project so uh, i guess one of the things we would like to know is uh can we have that money turned over to our board our coa board and then they can uh, finish it off uh, that's I, I know you can't answer that question right now just a thought <laughs> Any more solicitor can address it or yeah, that, that can't be done now. Okay. The only way it can be done, and we are taking the steps, hopefully, to either take the escrow ones and have whatever is left on the punch list, assuming that there is sufficient funds there to cover that, to take care of some of the issues that at least remain on the punch list. Is it going to take care of all of them? I don't know. The engineer and I are working on putting together exactly what the cost estimates are going to be. We will send Mr. Costa a letter indicating that in the event that he does not have his course of action taken care of within, I think the developer's agreement calls for 30 days, then the township will take steps to take care of those issues that remain outstanding and will surcharge him for any excesses over the escrow account. So we are at that point now where that notice will be sent out the engineer and I are going to work together to determine exactly what remains on that punch list. And then we will inform Mr. Costa that he is in violation and the township intends to move for default on the escrow. All right, yeah, thanks. I appreciate you guys staying on mm -hmm. top of this. Thank you. Uh, yes, right, right after her, sir. Please state your name and address, ma'am. Yes, my name is Joan Schock, 1010 Village Way. I live in Creekside as well. Um, I have several pictures here to show. I, my biggest concern is the grading and the berm that's behind my, my residence. Um, I happen to be at the very end of the berm where the grading should divert the water, uh, and it does not. Uh, now, these pictures with the water I uh, am showing you is before the attempt at grading occurred. Uh, we haven't had a huge rain uh, since then, but but we still are faced with, with water collecting, and then the landscapers come through to mow the lawn, and mow the yard. There's not much grass there, but they come through anyway, and their wheels uh, you know, dig into the, the dirt and it's still moist as of the other day. I mean, you know, water does settle there. Um, the other picture I have is to show you that the water backs up against my HVAC system and, and I put out a big, large breadboard to try to block the water so it diverts around my HVAC system. Um, so I would like, um, like would like that. Please just just hand it in to Mr. Needles. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Yep. Um, sir. Yeah. Yes. 
Name and address, please. My name's Charles Sheckler. I'm at 1008 uh, Village Way. And Joan and uh, Tom are both our neighbors. Um, I just want to know who has this punch list. Uh, I've never been aware of it because it, from the developer. Okay, well, so who gave it to Al and you guys? Like, did it come from someone at all? No, one of the engineers inspectors went in. Yeah. Let, let me let me do this. Um, there were two punch lists. One the township did. I did it actually, and that was presented to the board as well as certified mail to Mr. Costa. There was a second punch list that was done by the COA board and we compared the two. Mine was actually more stringent is what I was told than the, the punch list that was done for the COA. That being said, Mr. Costa had a certain number of days to complete it. So there, it, it went through a process that is the municipality's planning code process, so, which is part of his developer's agreement. Okay. Yeah, I just didn't know if that was publicly available. Um, but we do have a problem out back. Myself and one of our neighbors had our sliding door uh, insulated grass pane broken because of all the rocks that were sitting on this little berm that's outside. So, I mean, it's pretty costly. We, that, we haven't gotten anything back for it, where it comes from, who knows. But something does need to be done, whether, however it's done. Thank, Thank you. Tony Tarquinio, 1004 Village Way. I was one of the neighbors I got some glass shattered. And the uh, landscaper at the time was going to give me his... Uh, last guy to have it repaired because he knew because I was there when it happened so I was what happened and uh but eventually the landscaper was let go I said well I'm not going to pay for that it doesn't cost me like 600 bucks to fix it but it rocks so it doesn't happen again gotta be something gotta be done with them rocks I don't know about all this other punch list or nothing rocks gotta go because it's gonna happen again I don't want to be for 600 bucks. As I said, I've, you know, I've asked the solicitor for a course of action so that you could perhaps recover that money, sir. Perhaps. <laughs> That's the key word. We're approaching uh, 815, so if there's anybody Just, had... Did well, you speak yeah, yet, Yeah, real quick. Um, Linda did, Sheckler, 1008 Village. Um, is there a township engineer who has been out the house? Oh, you are the engineer? Okay. So you know what, what we're up against? Okay. And, and ma'am, I can tell you, I can tell you, Alan, um, Alan, right? Behind you. He can tell you that I've been out there, that Lisa's been out there. We've been out there with Mr. Costa, and he is very unresponsive. And that's why we're going to be taking the next steps to, you know, terminate his relationship, I guess. Um, if, is there anybody else from Creekside like to come up and speak? Anybody not from Creekside that would like to come up and speak? Okay, with that said, we're going to move on to our regular meeting. Uh, I almost made it, Lou. <laughs> Good seeing everybody. Um, just some things. Name is uh, Lou Purdy, Purdy Plumbing at 3903 Market Street, Aston, PA, 19014. Um, concerning, I talked with Nicole about the assessment. I'm sure everybody got their tax bills for the school district, right? How are you feeling about them? Some went down, some went up, right? Why you cut me off, Michael? Everybody else was able to speak. I'm just going to make a comment. Go ahead. We are not the school board. I understand that. So you didn't let me finish my point. You cut me off, Michael. You didn't need to cut me off, Michael. Thank you very much. Excuse me, Mike. You didn't need to cut me off. Lou, you're not. You're not. You're not running the meeting. You're right. I just wanted to make. I just want. Just want the public to know that we're not responsible for the school. I understand that, my friend. I understand that. So I want to say we're going to get back to the assessment thing. Has anybody had the assessment board come to their 
property to assess their property, to measure their property, come out. They have. That's unbelievable, isn't it? Because I've been in this township for 50 some odd years and build many a houses. First time I've ever seen it happen. First time. So you know what? You're right, Michael. It's not a township issue. It's a school board issue. Right. I talked to Nicole about it. I will go to the school board. I will voice my concern about that. So just to let you know on that, Michael. Yeah, go ahead, Joe. Right. right. Back in 2016, we understand that. Yes. Thanks, Joe. Very good. Uh, again, on the ball fields, the ladies that have the issue with the ball fields. I've been playing on that ball field for 50 some odd years. I know what goes on with that ball field down there. With the ball fields, it's a low lying area. There's a lot of runoff that comes down through there. There's been issues for over 50 years. The improvements that have been done by the township of Upper Chichester are enormous. They have done a hell of a job. And let me tell you what, in 50 years, this place has come around with them ball fields as a number one spot out there. The problem is, is we're in a low lying area. We get a lot of runoff down through there. We've had this issue with not only the men's and not, not only the juniors, and I understand with the women and all that. I'd be more than happy to go down there. I've worked on the project through years, over the 20 some odd years, 30 some odd years, since I used to work for the township. It's always been an issue. I just, I feel your concern. But what happens is what we've done in the past is what the men have done and what have the boys have done. We've got out there and we've been out there and raked the field. Even in when we had a beer lake down here, we would get out there. We knew that we had a crowd to get down there and would have to go ahead and rake that field. Um, so on that, I understand that. Uh, George, you're looking good. Looking awesome. Everybody, it's good seeing you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Mr. Purdy. Always good, Michael. All right, with that said, we're going to move on to our regular meeting. So, uh, Hi, my name is Judy Stang, and I live at 1602 Plum Street in the Gardendale section of Upper Chichester Township. And I'm just here tonight as the facilitator of the Heart and Soul Program to thank the commissioners and the town center group for the beautification of our township and our town center for all the support that you gave us in June for our program. And we are looking to partner again with the library to do it so that more people can come out and talk about and hear about what both groups are doing and to get input. So I thank you, Michael, for this time. Thank you, Judy. Just a um, just note that at part two of the summit, I had all attentions of coming. Um, I had three things scheduled for that night. I had a political event, a heart and soul, and my five-year-old son was um, graduating from preschool that night, and my uh, mother-in-law decided to drive up from Mississippi that day. So, thank you. So, um, just want to let everybody know that um, I, de I decided to spend some time with my family, and I apologize to Heart and Soul publicly for not making it out. But um, you're, I, I'm, I'm constantly talking to Miss Whitaker and um, George Needles about the project and how we can facilitate it. I did talk to Charlie about coming up with some ideas of, uh, of an outreach. So hopefully we can um, meet soon with, with um, your, your team and with um, Commissioner Whitaker. So I have, I have some ideas. So thank you. Um, with that said, if there's no other public comments, I'd like to move on to our regular meeting. And can I have the approval of the minutes for the June 10th, 2021 Board of Commissioners meeting? So, so Second. However, there are some corrections that I need to get. You don't need to read them in because it looks like it's minor, but uh, Thank you. Motion on the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. The motion is carried. I will, read, I will be reading items seven and eight on the agenda. Have a member of the board consider a, a resolution approving, approving the preliminary final subdivision plan with the Chichester Business Park parcel be submitted by Chichester 
Realty Company, LLC, owner of the property, situated at 820 Columbia Avenue in Upper Chichester Township and Lower Chichester Township, repaired by Spantec Consulting Services dated October 15th, 2020, last revised June 8th, 2021. So moved. Second. second. Motion and a second. Question. I believe the fee at uh, Commissioner Kasky, before you speak, I believe the fee, the fee in lieu of is approximately $500. All right. So, so, so we're not going to waive that, right? Uh, I'm not. Okay. Right. 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 Okay. And and regarding the open space, we're not taking any of that, that that small portion or whatever it is. We did not get anything from the applicant that they of a specific area that they were willing to give for her open right. space. All right, so motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion, motion is carried. Item number eight on the agenda. Have a member of the board consider a resolution authorizing ESCA release number six for Profco Pavilion Boothland LLC in the amount of $38,317.50. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Are there any comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion is carried. The next several items, we'll have our Vice Chairman Joe Baacco Thank you. Read, read the motion. Consider a motion approving the Township Engineer to prepare and advertise the bid specifications for the modified Boothwin Highland Stormwater Project pending the receipt of all necessary easements from the property owners. Second. Motion and a second. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion is carried. Consider a motion authorizing payment request number one from Premier Concrete Incorporated for the Chichester Avenue Streetcape, Streetscape project in the amount of $54,191.40. Second. Motion and a second. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion is carried. Consider a resolution authorizing Michael Gaudioso, President, Board of Commissioners, to sign all documents related to agreement number 0631142 regarding the CCTV camera system for the U.S. 322 Section 103 project with the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Department of Transportation. Motion and a second. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion is carried. Consider a motion accepting agreement number 0631142 regarding the CCTV camera system for the U.S. 322 Section 103 project with the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Department of Transportation. Motion and a second. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The ice have it. Motion is carried. Um, item number 13 on the agenda will be read by Commissioner Whitaker. Consider a motion approving the proposal. Uh, what is that? Playtel Logic, a co stars vendor for the installation of video surveillance cameras at Arlington Avenue Park, Johnson Avenue, Kingsman Road Park and Peachtree Park, not to exceed $50,000. Motion and a second. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion is carried. For the balance of um, our agenda, we'll have Commissioner Joe Neary read through the motions and uh, resolutions. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Consider a motion approving the real estate tax refund submitted by the tax collector in the amount of $11,447.34. So moved. Second. So motion and a second. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion is carried. Consider a motion approving the bond purchase agreement with RBC Capital Markets, LLC. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. The motion is carried. 
Consider an ordinance authorizing and directing the incurring of non-electoral debt through the issuance of one or more series of federally taxable general obligation bonds in the maximum aggregate principal amount of $45 million for the purchase of financing the township's unfunded actuarial accrued liabilities with respect to its retirement funds and other post-employment benefits and the payment of the cost issuing the bonds or any of all the same. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. The motion is carried. <clears throat> Consider a motion approving a temporary handicapped parking space in the vicinity of 1027 Beeson Avenue. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Consider a resolution to amend and restate its previously adopted eligible 457 deferred compensation plan to provide an annual contribution for the township manager. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. no. Motion is carried three to two. Consider a motion amending the employment contract between Upper Chichester Township and the township manager. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. no. Motion is carried three to two. I'd like to make a comment. Mm -hmm. yes. My uh, no vote is strictly based on the uh, new salary, not nothing the manager has done. Thank you. Consider a motion approving the trash refund list of 21 07. Second. Motion and a second. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion is carried. Consider a motion approving the list of bills in the amount of $512,878.98. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion is carried. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. At this time, we'll move on to our commissioners and professionals report. As always, we'll start off with the professionals first. And with Mr. Michael Pierce, our solicitor. Thank you, Mr. President. We have a copy of my written report. Two action items were related to that the bond issue was awarded as well as the bond purchase agreement that will move us forward to be able to get those bonds issued and help with the safety potential. We lost a lot of money over the years. I appreciate the work uh, that Corey has put in as well as the board to make this a reality. It's the cause of that long run. Thank you. Just a note on the bond that the that the township is going to be um, coming into an agreement with. Uh, we have the potential of saving approximately twenty one million dollars over the over the term of the bond. The life of the bond, the life of the bond. thirty years, I believe. Yeah. And this helps funds our post retirement um, uh, teamsters contracts, which a lot of townships. We're not even engaging in that. So that's, uh, I, I believe, it was a smart move to thank you to the board and to our professionals that helped get this done. Oh, uh, well, that said, we'll move on to. I have something. Or, oh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, Mr. Pierce, uh, where, where are we at with ranking road? Remember, remember that one little lot on, it's like, it was never, it was vacated, but nothing was actually deeded to anybody. Did we straighten that out yet? Because we're still going back and forth with somebody cutting it, keeping it cut, but yet it was vacated and given to the yeah, one I, property. I, it was still before the planning board. I think there was recommendations related to what was going to happen with that particular lot. And I don't know that they've come to a resolution with that, but I'll follow up on that. I mean, it's my understanding it was already vacated prior to when we vacated the other half of Rankin. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the action that the board took was to to uh, file the deed with the the uh, individual who owned that property before this because they were trying to sell it. Right. Yeah. This is that portion that not Mr. Mr. Gray's property. Yeah. So that was all processed and and I don't know given to their lawyer to handle. Right. So we can follow up with what if that was all filed. It's in their hands or uh -huh. uh, we, we processed I, all. Of our yes. Now now that I recall. Okay. Because yeah, we, we we were going back and forth again because nobody wants to cut that fifty foot by fifty foot area and it's pretty high. Yeah. Yep. As they say. So all right, thank you. 
If there are other comments for our solicitor, we'll move on to our council engineer. Thank you, Mr. President. You do have a copy of my report. Um, as you can see, Wawa has started putting the tanks in the ground, so that project is still moving along. Uh, the wall is finally getting some stone on it. It's becoming actually a reality at Gibbons Park, which is which is really nice. Um, AutoZone um, is moving along as well, not as quickly as we were expecting, uh, but that that they have started uh, with their foundation, so that's good news as well. Heard from Willowbrook Clubhouse yesterday. They are telling me that they have completed the punch list, so next month. I should have an escrow release if everything is in order. The um, Dunkin' Donuts, I, and at this point, we aren't expecting plans back until the uh, end of next week. They're planning by the end Friday, end of day, to submit. So I don't know that we will be seeing that at the next uh, meeting for any kind of action. The 820 we took care of. The only other thing that I wanted to mention is that we also uh, provided the first community development block grant for the streetscape, Rochester Avenue streetscape. If you recall, we have a grant from, from the multimodal fund, but we also have a community development block grant for that work. The amount of that grant was, or amount of that invoice was $102,000. $348. I only mention it because the Office of Housing, Community, and Development uh, just wants to make sure that the board is aware of that payment that will be made by the county. That's all I have, unless anyone has any questions. So I have one question for the local clubhouse. So uh, I, I walked the site with Mr. Needles uh, a couple of weeks ago, and even though uh, when, you, when you come out of the back door, the, the new rain retention pond is some distance away, about 40 feet away. Um, I did speak with Mr. Bill Gavin from Catania's engineering office about reaching out to the local crow house about maybe putting some type of buffer up around it. Um, my only concern is if the buffer doesn't go up, I just want to make sure that the council is not liable for anything, for any type of uh, approval, for final approvals or COs and uh, UNOs. I have approximately six to eight emails to Berger asking them to put some sort of a buffer there. I met with the contractor on site probably four to five months ago, showing him why we wanted and where we wanted something. And there has been no action on that. Um, we can uh, continue to try to get some action. They have a new director of their development group uh, was just hired, sent an email to us last week. So I think I will have a conversation with him and see if we can't get that resolved. I'm just looking towards liability once we sign off on a project that the company comes back on the township. So maybe a conversation with Mr. Pearson about that. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Lisa, yeah, I do. Lisa, I'd like you to um, speak to, to Douglas Avenue and what's not done on the plans that we did go out. Um, I, I met with them there on Monday. George and Mike also went out. So the conversation that I had with um, Vince and his brother is that they've done everything according to the revised approved plan. So my response to them was that while they may have um, completed it, it may not be done correctly. So I just want you to elaborate. You want that, that now? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, um, I wish I, I would have that with me, but I don't. So there is right now, there is no uh, paving on the driveway. That's required at least first 25 feet of the driveway. The driveway was to be paved. The grading is not completed in the front yard. Uh, right now, there's still spoils in at the end of the street. You can't see them at this point because there's vegetation there. There has been vegetation for quite a while. There are There is no walkway from the driveway to the front, which is not only a an issue for 
the, um, the site development, which is shown on the plan for site development, but as well, you have to have accessibility to the front yard. That's something that I don't handle. Charlie is aware of, of the request. I spoke with Charlie last Friday to make sure that he had the information he needed. I also spoke to Bill Gavin from our office. Once, once the building is, is constructed, this was, a, this was a modular home. So there isn't as much review and inspection on the project because it's already been inspected. So Superior Homes came in, they dropped the building, the connections were made, Catania Engineering did those inspections under the L&I department. So as far as Catania Engineering and the L&I portion of that project or Catania Engineering's portion of that project, uh, we are completed for the L&I. So now at this point, Charlie Romali would take over. So the, there are patches in the road that are incomplete. Uh, I do not believe that it's wearing course that the gentleman used to put the, Dave, I don't remember the, the contractor's name. Um, I sent that, there's photos of all of that. And as well, the, the extension of the roadway, it's only a small portion of the road just to his property line uh, is, is also that same material. What I have suggested to Ms. Whitaker, just to let the board know, is the, the money in, in the escrow, I would, I would suggest them if utilized to finish off any of the punch list for the house. And we would pick up the road on the road program. So I don't know if you would still in agreement with that or you have something else. No, that that's what we discussed. I wanted the... I wanted the engineer to explain that while the plans were set, the work is not done properly, right? So um, when I stated that the $15,000 couldn't be returned, my understanding is that until all the work is done according to, not according to the plan, but properly that meets the specifications, that my understanding is that the escrow can't be returned. Now we're not gonna use that money for to complete the road because we will do, like I stated, um, we'll do that, we'll add that onto our road program for this year, right? But that money that's in escrow, it needs to be used to complete all the things that the engineer just stated that need to be fixed. So that, that was right? also part of my conversation with the attorney. And that was my understanding as to what was going to happen. So just, okay. just so everyone is aware, the, the second contractor that came in, I saw the letter that, that got sent out. Second le the second contractor that came out, we actually met with that contractor on several occasions. The one time it was actually in their garage because it was pouring rain before all of the work was done. The first contractor actually had inlets that were about two feet higher than where, where they should have been like up out of the ground. Uh, so the second contractor came in and did fix all of that. Um, Hootman gave us a red line plan so that is to keep the cost down for, for Mr. Smith. We didn't want them going in and having to, to redo plans, especially since we would be getting an as-built plan for the, for the stormwater. So all of that stormwater is complete. Right now, there's not a blade of grass on there. None of the erosion controls are, are working properly at this point. So we've got, to, we've got to get some grass germinated. And I don't know that right now is the time that we're going to get anything, but we do need to get that stabilized. Okay. So. Mr. Smith, I'll let you make comments on the new, new, <coughs> on the new business. I'll let you make a comment on the new business. I just, I just want to, I just want to run through our commissioners' reports and our, and our professional reports. If I promise, I, I will come back to you. I, I promise, no. I promise, I, I'll promise, I will come back to you. Okay, thank you. So one other thing, Lisa, the twenty, you said twenty-five feet of the driveway needs to be paved. All right, what, what, how much of the driveway? Oh, that's what I thought you said. 
that. So that's what you initially said. I said? Yeah, I wrote it down, 25 feet of driveway. Okay. Okay. I believe it's 16 or 17, but I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. If you could let us know that, that would be right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, we'll move on to um, our council manager report. Uh, the reports are on file. Uh, and outside of that, I just want to thank the board for the votes tonight. I think uh, the uh, the bond, you know, Mike had hit on, uh, both Mikes had hit on this. This was a, a big uh, forward-thinking move for this board, something that's going to shore up the finances for the township for a very long time. Uh, there's not many municipalities addressing these long-term liabilities uh, out there right now. And, uh, you know, as as the individual our professionals who came and gave the presentation last week, uh, it's, it's snowballing, and these are things that are going to be coming in front of people, and they're going to be forced to make decisions on how to fund these things. Um, you know, with the rate environment being so good right now, it's a smart move to get in and do this now. Um, we've been really working on trying to fund these pensions over the past couple of years so that this doesn't become a, a, a problem for the township, and everybody's been doing a great job. Uh, thank you for the vote of confidence uh, in, my, uh, in my, my position here as the manager, and, uh, you know, Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Needles. Questions for our township manager? Uh, well, if not, we'll move on to our commissioner's report. Start off with vice chair, Commissioner Joe Baca. Thank you. Um, the highway department just came up with a uh, work schedule. Um, I got the email today. I thought everybody was copied, but they're not. I know Lisa, George, um, anybody wants to see how forward it is tomorrow. I'll just hit you all with it. Um, so we'll see what they're in for for the next few months. Um, so with our reports on file, um, I have nothing big to go over. If anybody has any questions, I'll be glad to answer. Questions for Vice Chair? Right, we'll, move, we'll move on to Commissioner Whitaker. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. Um, just a recap from what some comments that I made last week. Uh, the library is hosting its annual crab feast. It's going to be Saturday, August the 8th from 1 to 4. Tickets are $55. It will be held at the um, Bethel Firehouse. We're also doing a fundraiser. These flags that you see here are $25 each. So if you'd like to order one, you can place an order with me and or at the library. We'll be running this fundraiser um, it was through July through September, through Labor Day. Um, the library is also um, working in conjunction with the um, township's um, summer camp, which started um, this week, and they're running. They received a grant um, for STEM to run STEM and science programs. So um, that's they have a, a schedule out that's on their website as well as their Facebook page. They do um, allow students to attend for a week or a few days at a time, so you don't have to to attend the entire time. Also, um, what else? Heart and soul. So, heart and soul. Thank you, Judy, for your comments earlier. Just want to um, just reiterate that there was a meeting um, at the Boothwin um, Firehouse, um, and then our second meeting was at the community center, and they had about, I guess, overall over two hundred people show up. There were stations throughout the um, event where you could fill out surveys, um, listing the ideas or things that you currently, that you wanna see, that you like, that are happening in the town. So this is all feedback for the Heart and Soul Committee so that when they um, wrap up and make their presentation to the Board of Commissioners, they have a, um, a complete you know, report to, to provide to the board. So thanks to um, the Heart and Soul and just also, they, um, you've been extended through June of 2022. So we basically have another year of work to do. So if you're interested and you wanna get involved, please um, let Judy know, Judy's thing, let her know if you would like to get involved in that. Um, the the, um, the rec, um, Recreation Department is hosting a meeting. Um, we heard a little bit earlier 
They are hosting a meeting next Tuesday at six o'clock here at the township to meet with the local youth organizations, um, basically to find out what their needs are and to also just reiterate and let them know the township's um, guess responsibility, their position, and that we support them financially. Um, in some cases, we also lease them property, but that we are not ultimately responsible for the organizations. So uh, we will be meeting with that just so that everyone's on the same page with what the township is and is not responsible for. So that'll be happening next Tuesday. And all of our meetings are public meetings, so they you can attend. Be here at the township. Um, I believe that's it. That's all I have. Any, any questions for Commissioner Whitaker? That will move on, Commissioner Edward Casper. Thank you. Uh, all reports will be on file. Uh, the only one that's not on file until next week is the fire marshal uh, who's on vacation. We'll get that as soon as he gets back. Uh, echoing with uh, Commissioner Whitaker and Judy, thank you very much. The group one task force in the heart and soul. Did a joint venture at the uh, ballrooms of Bruce one in June June seventeenth. Uh, the Bruce one town center is a committee for a vision plan of the Bruce one town center, which is Chichester Avenue, Meeting House Road, up towards I ninety five and down, up to the bridge on Chai Avenue, and uh, they put both deliverables out there, the checklist, the, the surveys, and they're getting it all together. And on our report in the back page, we'll tell you the status checklist for the Brooklyn Town Center vision plan, which looks like will hopefully be finalized January, February of next year, 2022. So that was a good success. We did it also with them at the uh, community center. Uh, the poll was right. We had 100, almost 150 people in June and 100 people over at, uh, So they're coming out. People are excited. The task force, I thank them very much. Uh, they're excited about what they're doing. They're excited working with the uh, heart and soul, getting it out there to the community and getting everybody's opinion to try to make Chichester a little better place than what we have and some changes. Uh, other than that, that is it. Any questions for Commissioner for Gaspin? That will move on to Commissioner Joe Neary. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, good evening, everybody that's left anyway. Still here. Um, the financial statements are available in the office as well as the uh, police department report, um, the monthly report from them. Uh, I don't have anything from the tax collector for the summary report, so we'll have to stay on top of them for that. But um, I appreciate everybody's efforts, especially with the bond issue, because I think it's going to be, you know, a huge financial benefit to, uh, to us and to the township long term. Thank you. Any questions for Commissioner Neary? If not, we'll wrap up on my report. Um, I'll just keep it light and brief. Uh, at the end of the month, we're going to be having a planning meeting with the potential um, hotel coming in at Maple Zone. Um, I really don't have anything else to report on. Uh, we covered everything in the meetings as far as um, ENT being passed tonight. That was also my on my agenda last week. Um, I believe Steve Park is coming in tomorrow. I'm going to be talking to him about maybe some ideas in my ward and just to get to know him a, a little bit better. And that's all I have. Any questions or comments for me? All right. If there's no other questions or comments for me, I'll, I'll move on to new business. And Mr. Smith, um, if you'd like to grab the microphone and state your concern, I'll, I'll give you a few moments. Yeah, I, I, I totally, I totally get it um, about what's going with with the grading and everything like that. But when I with my statement, I just want everybody to understand like uh, what 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 really happened from the beginning. Okay, um, I don't know this is fact, right? This is just my opinion. But we we got a house, we put it down, right? Then the builder was told that he had to thin the street, make kind of like a cul-de-sac, right? Took the money from the bill, took our money, fifteen thousand dollars that we that we're talking about. They took it from the bill money and put it in escrow. 
prying, wood excavation, walked out. Right, the house is built too high. Right, it's it, you know, like like she was saying, like uh, Miss Catania was saying, the pipes that to go to the stormwater management was done improperly. Right, so we 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 took out money to hire somebody else to come and fix that. Problem that we're having is that nobody wants to come and, and repair it because they don't want to be liable for it being wrong, messed up. So we're we're like, you know, we're we're forced to. It seems like we're forced to pay for a street that we shouldn't pay for. It should have been already there. Yeah, but that. We are petitioning. We are petitioning the board. I got right. In the road program, so. Right, but but uh, Miss Catania said that the 15 by 12 was done improperly in the driveway, and we don't have anything to do with that. And um, you know, certain standards and specifications that contractors have to adhere to it doesn't appear that they did. Right, I mean, but, just just even me visually looking at the road when I went there. Right, it's, but, not, it's not up to par. But but, but again, but, that's a new point because I'm petitioning the board for us to take care of that. So my biggest concern is your brother's living in the house. There's some deficiencies that need to be rectified. Find, be find him. We'll take it. We'll find him. Find him. We'll take it. And, and, and the lawsuit that we have against the builder, he'll pay for it. But I, all I'm saying is, like, like you know, I'm a disabled veteran. He's a disabled veteran. We don't have, we got a fixed income. We don't have the funds to keep putting it in and fixing people's and I, and I understand where you're coming from, but like you know, like the driveway with this, with with, with you know, it was supposed to be on the plans. It says stone. So, I mean, if it, if it's an issue that, that it was on the plans, it said it was supposed to be improved and put a sidewalk on. I mean, a, a driveway on there. Fine, we'll do it. But I'm like, I need y'all help. I don't want to, uh, you know. You know, I already cited to you guys, and, and you and you're going to fix it. So with the street, so uh, the, the 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 grading, right? There is it's grass on it. I cut it today. The whole grass, the whole yard is is already it has grass on it. I cut it today myself, and. Uh, I just I'm going to let Miss Whitaker work with you to you know to yeah but you you, you know you're holding our you know fifteen thousand dollars that we could use to do all the improvements that Miss Catania wants or whatever but it, yeah it, it's not first it's not you know I just got to hold I mean aware of the being a with the attorney major this thing. It's not, and he's not my attorney. So, uh, yeah, Vincent's attorney. I'm, I'm, I'm on there, I'm on the house with Vincent. Is, is there any possible way, you know how, some, is there any possible way to use the money in the escrow? Authorize us to do, we just need to figure out what it's going to cost and at what level, and it's the agreement that I had with the attorney was, if it costs more than that, then they're going to be responsible for it. But that was and he the agreed. To, and that was for the it was for all of the items that needed to be addressed. Right, and, and as I said several times tonight, I'm going to put the board to take care of the street. The extra money, I'm not trying to help you and your brother to the house. Right, but you, you, you took the $15,000 for the street. Yeah. We haven't no. taken, no, we haven't done No. The, okay. Let me explain the escrow, just, just so you understand. Yes. We, when we do an escrow, the escrow is for all of the improvements. So it would be curb. It would be sidewalks. It would be um, erosion controls. It would be the stormwater system. So there, there is a list that totals a certain amount, Okay. There was also in that escrow monies for the street. 
that was from day one. That was not something that the builder, Ryan Holmes, or no, not Ryan Holmes. Ryan was the superior. was the was the superior homes. Um, actually, they did not provide that escrow. That was it through a, a develop a, an agreement with your brother. Okay, I don't know where the money came from for the total, but that that's how the escrow works. As those improvements are completed, then that money goes back to to you, or are goes you back to your brother. There's no, there's no dead end streets allowed in town. Uh, say it that again. No, it doesn't have anything to do with it. You're, you're hung up on the street. I'm trying to get you the house completed S and inside the house. We're, 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 we're not going to get any further. All right. Um, Um, with that said, I'd like to uh, thank everybody for coming out tonight. I have a motion to adjourn. Okay. Motion a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you, everybody. Meeting adjourned.